Statistics and Excel, correlation simple with few data points example. Got data? Let's get stuck into it with statistics and Excel. You're not required to, but if you have access to OneNote, we're in the icon, left-hand side, OneNote presentation, 1725 correlation, simple few data points, example tab. Also uploading transcripts to OneNote so that you can go into the view tab, immersive reader tool, change the language if you so choose, be able to either read or listen to the transcript in multiple different languages using the timestamp to tie in to the video presentations. OneNote desktop version here, thinking about correlation, having different data sets to see whether there's a mathematical relation or correlation between the different data sets. In other words, are the dots of the different data sets roughly moving together in some way, shape, or form? If there is a mathematical relation or correlation between the two different data sets, the next logical question would be, is there a cause and effect relationship that is causing the correlation or mathematical relation between the two different data sets? And if there is a causal relationship, the next logical question would be, what is the causal factor which is causing the causal relationship, which is causing the correlation or mathematical relation between the different data sets? In prior presentations, we thought about a perfect positive correlation and a perfect negative correlation, things that are useful to think about in theory, but aren't usually exactly what we have in practice because normally we don't have a perfect correlation. We have somewhat of an imperfect correlation or trend that we are observing. So this time, we'll look at a data set that has less information in it, but is not perfectly correlated. So our example, we're going to imagine that X is now going to be the number of hens. So we're talking about hens and Y is going to be the number of eggs. Now note that if you're looking at two different data sets, you might have some pre-assumptions, some hypotheses that you are going to make from the data. So for example, if you're talking about hens and eggs, you might be thinking that the hens are going to be uh, the, the causal factor that's going to be producing the eggs but you do have a chicken and eggs problem i mean if you were the farmer you could buy eggs that would produce hens that would then make the eggs but you know you might usually generally think that the farmer is going to buy the hens first which are going to be you know producing the eggs or something like that so that's a question of the cause and effect kind of relationship remember that when we're thinking about the mathematical correlation we don't necessarily know if there's a causal factor or not and what that causal factor is we're just looking at the relationship with the mathematics so we're going to imagine that if we had three hens we've got uh, the number of eggs 105 five hens we got the eggs at 185 and six hens uh, the eggs at 201 this is going to be eggs per year uh, given the number of hens and then seven hens 345 now the the idea here would generally be well if i had more hens then i would you know produce more eggs you would think so you would think that there would be you know a causal relationship between them if we plotted these out if i just plot these four points noting now that it's an easier thing to plot because we're looking at few uh data points and we can see kind of just from the type of data that we have that you would think that there would be a causal relationship between the number of hens and the number of eggs. So now we're going to say, if we were to plot this then, and if I plot this in Excel, I can just select the X and the Y. The X will automatically plot uh, as a default on uh, the X axis here, which is, which is good for us. We're using a scatter plot, and then we can basically label this thing. So you can see our four points. So with three hens... Uh, we have 105 eggs. We had the five hens here with five hens. We had uh, 185 eggs. And then with six hens, we had the 200 eggs. And with the seven hens, we had the 350. Now, as you would expect, we have a positive kind of correlation type of relationship. We can draw a line, a trend line in there. And that is a useful thing to do because if we were trying to think about in the future whether or not we need to buy more hens if we want to have more eggs and we're trying to think how many more hens do we need in order to achieve so many more eggs i can't really look at these these different dots and try to figure that out i can kind of like say okay i'm going to put a dot up here somewhere but if i have a line 
then of course we can use the formula of a line to give an idea of what the approximate number of hens would be to uh, produce the, the next number of eggs. Now also again, remember that usually we put the hens or we put the independent variable, in this case the hens, on the x generally, and we put the dependent variable on the y. So again, I would imagine as a farmer, you're thinking about how many eggs you're gonna make that you would go buy hens and then say, how many hens do I need in order to possibly produce enough eggs? However, again, you could think of it as, well, what if they were to buy eggs and then the eggs would make the hens, but some roosters, maybe roosters that you have to eat or something before they start roostering and then you, but you, so you could think about it that way too. But, but so that, so, but there it is. So you, now if I was to flip them, what would happen? What if I put the egg, eggs on the X and the hens on the Y? Would I get a negative correlation? No, you're still going to get a positive correlation. Mathematically, you still have the, the positive correlation uh, showing here. So now you've got the number of eggs. So if I had this number uh, of, of eggs, then you've got three hens, right? If I had, so you can think of it in this fashion. If I had around 100 and whatever that is eggs 180 i think it was then you can predict that you had you know five hens uh or uh in that fashion as well so you still have the positive uh relationship you can still draw the trend line whether you put you switch you switch out the x's or the y's okay so now let's do the mathematical uh kind of relationship we can say what's the mean of this so the mean calculation, like normal, is the average. So if I take the average number of x's, we can actually calculate this in the calculator because we don't have many x's. Three plus five plus six plus seven divided by four is gonna be the 5.25. And on the y's, 105 plus 185 plus 201 plus 345 divided by four is gonna be the 209. And then we're gonna take the sample and the sample is going to be the formula in Excel equals the stand. I'm sorry, the standard deviation, not the sample, the standard deviation of the sample, standard dev dot S of these two data sets. We get the 1.71. That's the measure of the spread and the 99.92. Uh, so once we have that, we can do our calculation, which is going to be here's our formula for the calculation, which we're going to take each X minus the mean divided by the standard deviation. So we'll do this in a step-by-step -step format. So we're gonna take each of the X's, here are the X's, and then do the same with the Y's, subtract minus the mean over the standard deviation, which is basically the Z-score. Then we'll sum all of them up and divide by N minus one. Let's do that one by one. We're gonna say first we have the X's. So let's do it each of the data points minus the X. So we're gonna say Three, uh, three, five, and seven minus x. So we have. Well, let's look at that over here. The three here minus minus the uh, five point two five, which is the.